Hi, I'm here today with Felia Salim, the Vice President Director of Bank Negara Indonesia and a leading voice in the effort to strengthen sustainability within the Indonesian banking sector. Ibu Felia, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, an exception in the Indonesian marketplace, BNI has been vocal about its commitment towards more transparent and sustainable practices, addressing environmental compliance and green investment, as well as social and employment issues. With a broad portfolio of loans and financial services st stretching across a range of sectors and clients, what strategies and methods are available to banks in order to vet and monitor the clients and projects they are servicing to ensure sustainability standards are being upheld? Well, f first of all, you know, um, the government's commitment for pro-growth, pro-environment and pro-poor. And that uh, obviously translates into um, being commit having a commitment to sustainable development. How do we translate that into the bank? Um, we don't see any, um, we're not at opposite end with those very principles or those objectives because um, sustainable measures uh, only means a sustainable business, which means it makes sense, it makes economic sense, it makes business sense to um, pay attention to sustainability measures. Um, well, the next step is we look at the different sectors we, we finance. And uh, the various sectors, be that in energy, forestry, um, agribusiness, each sector to date have different measures addressing sustainability. We quickly adopt those measures into and mainstream that into our, our system. As an umbrella of those measures, it falls under the environmental and social risk assessment criteria, which we have mainstream into how we evaluate our uh, client base. So, uh, so basically, we have translated all um, the sustainability agenda into how we do our business. Okay. Well, this sustainability agenda is potentially not mirrored by other banks in Indonesia and adhering to sustainable and responsible practices might require the exclusion of some quite profitable investments and activities or it might mean for example longer time horizons on returns. How do your commitments to sustainability impact your bottom line when for example your competitors may not be adhering to such rigorous standards and the playing field is, is not level? Yeah. Um, I think more and more the market is being aware, is more and more aware of the need to look at sustainability measures, particularly for the large corporations that is uh, reaching out uh, into global markets. They necessarily have to abide by uh, market standards to date. We're not so worried about the large corporations because um, when they are integrated into the global market where sustainability measures is required, they can take care of, they can take care of themselves. But where there is a challenge, and for other banks, big and small, are the medium and small sized businesses. We like to be in the forefront because we, it has been proven that sustainability measures does make economic sense. And, uh, uh, when we enter into agreement with our customer base, it's for the long run. Okay. And so part of that as well is um, I'm wondering what, do you, what are you doing internally to ensure that the, the pressures on your, on your staff to perform financially and, and meet their performance indicators do not, do not conflict with their mandates to, towards sustainability as well? Yes. Um, First of all, we, the environmental uh, social risk assessment criteria, it's, it's a requirement. So a lot of training goes into that, into uh, preparing our workforce uh, to adopt these measures. Um, so far, I must say, when we talk about the larger, even medium-sized businesses, 
I think more and more it's inevitable that these sustainability measures are abided by. Of course, there are challenges. Um, we are a decentralized nation with decentralized institutions and uh, local governments and local regulations. These are the challenges, but these, are, these need to be addressed. And um, we are convinced that if the legal uh, environment uh, were to improve, I think these challenges can be reduced when, I, when it comes to um, legality, uh, land issues, that they, are, that they are legally certified. I think that reduces the risks. So we, we don't want to cut short on, on these very important um, certification legal issues. We don't cut short and we'd rather not be in those areas where it's just for the short run. It's a lifetime banking partnership with our customer base and um, this is a, a fairly uh, old bank and we have proven that um, a long-term partnership requires growing together and understanding uh, that sustainability measures is important. Okay. And when you say that it's a it's an old bank, it's their long-term relationships. Um, many of the corporations now, the multi multinational corporations, are made up of a number of subsidiaries and actors um, that are operating across a number of sectors. Um, and companies may show a sustainable front in one project, yes. and but not in in others. Um, how do customer due diligence processes help with um, sort of mediating this, these these issues, and where does due diligence stop? Um, is it at the project level? Is it at the customer level? Is it at the corporation level? Um, yeah, where 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 do these due diligence procedures stop? Yes, um, it's it's probably easier with the larger companies because they they would have in their system to do an independent audit, which we also encourage them to do so. So uh, th that is uh, less of a problem. But and, uh, the large corporation where, where they have a lot of subsidiaries would most likely have be, be guided by the same measures, right? Um, but in terms of our banks or our uh, bank officers to be able to uh, do the audit into their uh, subsidiaries, there are limitations, of course. So we really need to look at um, consolidated picture of the group, of the business group itself, okay. right? Because that's very much part of the credit process. You don't just look at um, the company that you lend to, but you need to, to be able to assess the, the mitigation and the uh, interdependency with, with the other subsidiaries. So that that's actually is, is part of the credit process. So when you are providing a financial service or issuing credit to a company or customer, at what level do you carry out your assessment? The project, subsidiary or group level? So basically when we, when we assess a large business group that has a lot of subsidiaries, most likely if it's an established large uh, uh, corporate group, they would have an umbrella uh, that that, that uh, applies across the board to all their subsidiaries. But then how do we as bankers uh, ensure, ensure that? First, of course, we have to trust the owners, the manage managers. Th that's part of the, the credit assessment process, uh, the, the commitment of the, the owners and the management. Um, and secondly, while we don't have legal rights, so to speak, to audit, to double check, um, you know, uh, the second level or third level subsidiaries, but you have to rely on the uh, the relationship or the business group as a whole, yeah. because you do assess the group, the consolidated picture of the group, mm -hmm. and very often um, one can detect that. Uh, as, as a business group, if there's a, as a consolidated, that is also, we have certain measurements that we're not only looking at one aspect, yeah. 
it's, it's the one obligor concept, which is also very much um, a re requirement by the central bank okay. to look at it in its totality. It's, um, it's interesting though with, with sustainability standards increasingly being focused on particular sectors or commodities though, mm -hmm. it would imply potentially or that, that actually uh, companies might, might focus their efforts on a particular sector or a particular commodity and mm -hmm. it maybe not, there would not necessarily be the incentives in place to have that umbrella of, of good governance and good management over all aspects of their, yeah. their business. Yeah, yeah. well, um, it takes uh, a lot of effort to understand a large business group that is involved in different sectors. And uh, usually you can, you can um, understand uh, that you understand the owners, the commitment of the owners and the people they, they employ, uh, uh, whether they're committed or not. So a lot of management assessment uh, takes place. One simple indicator is how well do they treat their employees? How well, uh, how well do they run uh, the factory and whether or not they pay attention to the laborers? That's uh, just some of those indications that, that uh, and some insight into how we, we figure out um, uh, whether or not this is credit worthy or not. You know, nothing is cast in stone, but then it's through a lot of uh, insight, something that you, you cannot always obtain from very sati a statistical model. Yeah. But the, a qualitative assessment. Uh, or a check. Checklist. Not just standard, a checklist. Yeah. You need to understand and gain insight into, into you know, management assessments, um, their their vision of, their vision of the of the company. Okay. Th those areas. Can I ask one more question? Um, in your presentation earlier, you spoke about the role of regulation, um, mm -hmm. and the importance of of regulation um, in. Um, having a, a broader impact. Yeah. Um, in what ways do you think that um, the Indonesian banking regulation or even mm -hmm. sectoral regulations, Ministry yeah. of Agriculture, etc., can play a part yeah. in making, in simplifying things for the banking industry when yeah. making more sustainable investments? And well, you see, um, I've been observing this over the last more than 10 years now. Um, Perhaps a decade ago, people are talking more and more about uh, more as a, as, as a voluntary in nature, sustainability. Yeah. They're called something, different things, environmental, now it's sustainability and, and whatnot. Um, but I think at, at this point, uh, because the market is ripe, the market is ripe, that's why I believe there is that pull and push between the market and the consumers uh, 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 insisting on on green products for example yeah. so it, it's followed by the producers who who just want to meet the customer the cu customer needs and wants so that's why the it, it's it's uh, progressing a lot faster than what I observed 10 15 years ago it's the market had demanded it, and and I think the market or the industries are realizing that it makes good business, good, make good, good business sense. Um, so this is this is where the opportunity lies, and and uh, um, of course, as bankers, you always would like to see independent assessment um, to to service um, all the various sectors, yeah, because there are can be quite rigorous, very technical, uh, but this is something we just have to, we just have to go through. Okay. And I do see, I do see opportunities and, and, and uh, I'm more encouraged today than I was some 10 years ago. Okay.